Hello, my name's Dee Dee and I'm a 60 year old woman. My husband died about five years ago, but I'm still a working woman. I have five kids, four of which live in different states all across the country. They each have their own families and I'm beyond blessed to have such a big family. One of my kids, Jack, still lives in our hometown. He attended the community college here, which is where he met his wife, Riley. I liked her, but I didn't think my opinion mattered either way as long as Jack was happy. The two of them got married pretty soon and then pursued further education together in their respective fields. When they got good jobs and earned enough, they decided to have a child. I was excited because that meant I had one more grandchild to spoil. But Riley was weird about me meeting my grandchild, Jason. She was very particular about when I could visit and how long. It was understandable in the first year of Jason being born, but even when he was six? That was odd, but I let it go because every family functioned differently. Before I knew it though, 12 years had passed. Because of the limited amount of interaction I was allowed to have with Jason, I didn't really get to develop a strong bond with him. All I did know was that we both shared a genuine love for books. So whenever I did go over, I made sure to buy him some books I knew he'd like. One day, I was at work when I got a call from Jason. Now, that was odd for various reasons. The most prominent reason being that Jason and I barely spoke outside of family gatherings. I tried my best to connect with him the way that I had done with my other grandchildren, but he seemed way too distant. Grandma, are you free to talk? Yes, honey. Any time for you. Tell me, is everything okay? N no. Why are you crying? Did you get hurt? Is there anybody at home who can help you? Mom and Dad are here, but do you need me to call them for you? No, I called you because I needed your help. My help? What could I help you with, darling? I need you to save me. <laughs> Jason, what are you talking about? Don't laugh, Grandma. I'm sorry, honey. That was not what I was expecting you to say. I'm not kidding. If you aren't going to help me, I'll find a different way. No, hold on. I'm sorry for laughing. Now, why don't you explain what you meant? I need you to save me from my devil mother. Devil mother? Honey, what do you mean? She's not as sweet and nice as she acts. She's really mean to me when no one's around and she keeps... Oh no, I hear someone coming up the stairs. I have to go. Please don't tell them that I've called. Bye. I was confused and concerned. As far as I knew, Riley was one of the sweetest people I knew. How could Jason call her a devil? I didn't believe him at the time because... I figured that it was just him trying to get back at Riley. After all, she probably grounded him for something he had done. As far as I knew from what both Riley and Jack had told me, Jason had been a pretty mischievous child. But I had this nagging feeling in my gut that Jason was not joking around. As I went home that day, I couldn't stop thinking about the call. It was very out of character for Jason to do that. I slept on it for a couple of days, but I still couldn't rid myself of the feeling that something was up. So I decided to make an impulse purchase and ordered a hidden camera. Of course, I felt wrong spying on my son and his family, but I justified it by telling myself that I was only doing that because Jason called me to explicitly ask for my help. If, and hopefully, there was nothing, I could just retrieve the camera. But if there was something, then I'd have to figure out what exactly needed to be done. I hoped that even if there was something happening, a long talk would solve that issue. The camera took a couple of days to arrive, and after it did, I set it up. Thankfully, this was one of those cameras that I got live footage from as well as recorded footage. I could access the footage through an app on my phone, which made it very convenient for me. Once I had set it up and figured out the technicalities of the gauge, I decided to call my son and ask him if I could come over. 
Hello, sweetie. How's everything? Everything's great, Mom. What about you? It's the same old, same old. Although I was wondering about something, and I thought I'd ask you about it. Yeah, of course. Is everything okay? Yes, yes. I was just thinking that we haven't met in a long time, and I was wondering if I could just swing by your place one day. Yes, of course, Mom. How about this Sunday? Yes, that works. But shouldn't you maybe check with Riley if that's okay? Lord knows, I hated it when your dad made plans without asking me about it. I know Riley would be really happy to have you over. Don't worry, Mom. All right, then I'll be there around five o'clock. That works. See you soon. Take care. Even though I was going to Jack's place with ulterior motives, I was actually still excited to go spend time with my son. Considering I never really saw the rest of my family until the holiday season, it felt nice to have one of my children staying in the same town. I tried my best to not intrude because they were living their own lives. The weekend came by pretty quickly. I got ready pretty early on and figured that I should take something over to their place. I went to the grocery store and picked up a nice bottle of wine and I bought a couple of books for Jason because I knew he loved to read. When I got to my son's house, I was greeted warmly by all three of them. Jason looked at me with so much relief that I got concerned again. He hadn't tried to contact me after that first phone call, so I had no way of knowing what he was going to say when he hung up. I spent the next couple of hours just talking to Jack and Riley. We had dinner and drank wine. At some point, Jason went to his room because we were talking about adult things that I bet weren't of interest to him. So I excused myself to go talk to Jason. Riley did try to subtly stop me, but I insisted because I had visited them after a long while, and I didn't think it was right to not spend time with my grandson. Jack stopped Riley from saying whatever he wanted to and told me to go talk to Jason. Once I got to his room, I shut the door behind me. I walked over to him and handed him the books I had gotten him. We talked for a while about the books, a conversation that he had started. He seemed really excited about them, so I let him ramble on about them. I didn't try to bring up what he had mentioned because I wanted him to do it. We moved on to talking about other things like what was going on in our lives. At some point, while he was talking to me about his school and other things, he grabbed one of his notebooks and began to write something in it. He showed it to me, and it said. Mom's listening. Can't talk about anything. I couldn't tell if he was being serious or just paranoid, but I went along with it. We continued our conversation while I wrote my plan in the notebook. I told him that I had brought along a hidden camera with me and asked if I could plant it in his room. He seemed ecstatic and agreed instantly. I shuffled around the room and found a good spot to keep the camera that gave me a good view of the room. I started the recording and checked my phone to make sure that the camera worked. I sat with Jason a little longer until I told him that it was getting late and that I should get going. I did leave my scarf behind so I would have an excuse to come back whenever I needed to. I remember hearing footsteps. Hurriedly shuffling away from the door after I said that, and it made me wonder if Jason truly was right. I didn't pay much mind to it at that time, and I hugged Jason goodbye. I went back downstairs and said my goodbyes to both Jack and Riley, and then made my way back home. I was pretty exhausted from the night, but I did check the camera when I got back home. I stayed up for an hour to read and kept an eye on the footage just in case something happened. All that had happened was my son walked into Jason's room and asked him what we had talked about. Jason told him about it, and that was that. I fell asleep eventually, and when I woke up the next morning, I didn't check the cameras. I rushed to work, and I only checked the camera when I knew Jason would have been back from school. Once again, nothing much happened, and I was beginning to think that Jason really was lying. I decided to give it just another day, and if I didn't find anything, I would go over when neither Jack or Riley were home, and I'd ask Jason to give me the camera back. 
But that night, as I kept an eye on the footage while I read, I found out what Jason was trying to tell me. I watched Riley enter the room with a stick in her hand, with Jack trailing behind her. I immediately unmuted the video. I heard Riley ask Jason what he did that entire day. She made him narrate it to her in extreme detail. Whenever he stuttered, she would sharply ask him if he was lying, and if she felt like he was, she had him put his palms out and would deliver two to three swift raps against his knuckles. I watched in growing horror as the number of times she kept hitting him got more and more frequent. Jason was sobbing and Jack just stood there and watched. I was disappointed and disgusted with what I was watching. I had raised all my kids in a very gentle manner. I barely even yelled at them because I believe that kids are smarter than we think. While we may not be able to reason with them, they are capable of understanding when you explain things to them. I didn't understand why Jack was just standing there and letting his son get hit for something so unnecessary. I wanted to rush over to their place and stop them. But what would I have said to them? They would have found it odd that I happened to be back just a day after I was already there. I remembered that I had left my scarf there, but I knew that I could have used that excuse in that moment because I needed that as an excuse to meet with Jason. But I could do one thing. I picked up my phone and called Jack. Hey mom, is everything okay? Yes, no worries. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, no, Riley and I were just saying good night to Jason. Ah, all right then. I just wanted to tell you that I think I left my scarf in Jason's room last night. I remember setting it down there and then like a klutz, I forgot it there. Do you think I could swing by tomorrow and pick it up? Why don't I just come over and drop it off for you right now? No, I'm way too tired and I'm going to fall asleep before you even get here. I had a long day at work and I'm barely even holding up the phone right now. All right then, why don't you swing by in the evening? I can't do that. I'm meeting up with a couple of my friends for game night tomorrow. Well, Riley and I won't be back till evening. Why don't you swing by the day after? I need that scarf for tomorrow. We're having a, a themed get together of sorts. Well, you could swing by in the afternoon. Jason will be home. Oh, lovely. I'll be there around two. Good night, Mom. My heart raced as I came up with lies on the spot. At least my call distracted Jack and Riley enough for them to discuss whatever I had said to Jack instead of focusing on hitting Jason. But before they left Jason's room, Riley declared that Jason would not be getting any dinner or any other meals until dinner the next day. I was appalled. I wished I didn't believe that Riley and Jack would follow through, but from what I saw, I knew that wouldn't be the case. The next day, I took off from work and mentally prepared myself for the conversation that I was going to have with Jason. I was sure that he would not want to continue living there, but I still needed to hear him say that. Before I went over to Jack's place, I made sure to pick up some food for the both of us. When I got there, Jason looked like he was about to faint at any minute. He looked weak and he was very lethargic. Riley really did make him not eat anything. I quickly gave him his food and watched as he devoured it. I felt so sorry for him and I knew that I wanted to make things better for him. When he was done eating, I spoke to him. Did you see everything that happened? Yes, darling, and I'm so sorry for laughing at you earlier. I had no idea. No, it's okay. I know mom seems like the nicest person, but has she always been this way? The beating only started recently, but the starving has been going on for a while. And I just need to get a clearer understanding. So could you tell me why Jack isn't doing anything? He's too scared of mom. He just follows her everywhere and listens to everything she says. Everything she wants, she gets. 
Oh, honey, I'm so sorry that you've been dealing with this for a while. But I am curious. Why didn't you eat anything at school? Mom didn't send me to school. On days that she doesn't let me eat, I stay home. Mom measures how much of each food is there in the house, and if it's even one gram off, when she gets back, I get punished more. So she's starving you and jeopardizing your education? I'm definitely going to do my best to help you out, okay? I need you to tell me right now if you would like to come live with me. I'll take care of everything you need and I'll keep you away from mom and dad. Of course, Grandma. Anywhere away from here will be great. I promise to only be good. Just please, take me away from here. I promise I will, darling. But it will take some time. Do you think you can handle staying here for a little while longer? Yeah, I can. I've been living here for 12 years, so I can wait a little more. I carefully took away all the wrappers and made sure to leave no trace of any food there. I didn't want Riley to make things worse for Jason. I then helped Jason clean up any crumbs and then checked and double checked to make sure we left the place exactly as it had been. I went back home and made sure to call Jack to let him know that I had gotten my scarf back and thanked him for being cooperative. Next, I contacted a good friend of mine who worked with family law. I explained my situation to him and he told me that it would be hard and long to fight for custody of Jason. He also informed me that while I may be able to get custody, the judge may only give me a temporary one and in that time, Riley could easily change up her behavior and get back her custody of Jason. I knew that getting her to court and trying to fight for custody was definitely not going to work in my favor, especially with what little evidence I had. But I did know one thing. I could use the evidence I did have to get her to make me Jason's legal guardian. You see, Riley worked as a counselor at one of the many middle schools in our district. I was sure that she wouldn't want her abusing her child to reach anywhere and take away her current job and future job prospects. I kept careful watch over the footage the next few days as I gathered all my evidence and sorted the paperwork for a transfer of guardianship. I waited until it was the weekend to go over to Jack's without any notice. When Jack opened the door, he seemed surprised to see me there. Mom, what are you doing here? I need to talk to you and Riley. Uh, I don't think now's a good time. Why? What's going on? Just family stuff. Hold on. How come you're suddenly over so frequently? Can't I visit my son? I didn't think I needed to have any special permission to do that. No, I didn't mean it like that. It's just that you've taken a sudden interest in us this week and it's weird because you rarely ever dropped by before. It isn't really weird. I only came over today because I have something seriously important that I need to talk about with the two of you. I don't think... What's that sound? I knew that Riley was doing something to Jason because of how evasive Jack was being. But when I heard what sounded like loud crying coming from Jason's room, I pushed Jack aside and walked into the house. There was no way I was not going to protect him when I was standing right there. I ran, well, more like speed walking, considering I'm not very young, to Jason's room and burst the door open, only to see Jason sobbing as he clutched his face. Riley was breathing hard as she looked at him with so much malice that I shivered. I ran over to Jason and asked him if he was all right. He just hugged me tight and wailed into my ears. Riley humphed and walked away. When Jason calmed down, I took a good look at him and noticed that his cheek was red and swelling up. His knuckles were bleeding and there were welts on his arms, all from the stick. I felt a kind of rage in me that I had never felt before. What kind of a monster do you have to be to hit a child so hard? Nothing the child did deserved that level of treatment in any case. 
I went downstairs to the kitchen and grabbed a bag of frozen veggies and went back upstairs to give it to Jason so he could use it to help reduce the swelling in his cheeks. Once I had made sure that he was okay, I told him that I would be taking him to my place that day and asked him to pack as many of his things as he could. With that, I walked back down to talk to both of them. Riley looked mad and Jack looked like he wanted to be anywhere but there. How dare you just barge into our home that way? Isn't it a good thing that I did? You are hitting your child for crying out loud. What I do in my family is none of your business. Your child is my grandson and he is a part of my family too. You're hurting him and I can't let that go on. He may be your grandson, but you don't live with him. You don't know what a brat he is. I'm just disciplining him. Who cares if he's a brat? He's a child. And there are so many other ways to go about disciplining a child other than hitting them. I mean, you of all people should know this. Listen, I don't believe in any of that gentle parenting crap. Leave me and my family alone. You got it? I'm afraid I can't do that. What do you mean? I handed Riley the papers that she needed to sign to transfer guardianship rights to me. Both she and Jack stared at the paper for a long minute before looking at me in utter confusion. I explained to both of them that they both had to sign the papers or I would be releasing the proof I had of them hitting Jason. What do you mean by proof? I set up a hidden camera in Jason's room last week and I have all the proof I need. Neither of your jobs will appreciate what you guys do, especially yours, Riley. If you want to have any income at all, I suggest that you sign the papers. You are spying on us? That's a gross violation of our privacy. Don't get me wrong, but I was only acting on information that I had. I needed to make sure Jason was doing all right. Mom, don't do this to us. Give us another chance. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. I don't want to hear any of it. I'm very disappointed in you, Jack. I raised you to be better than this. You're just as disgusting as Riley, as if not more. I'm taking Jason with me and I expect the papers to be signed after. If you don't, you know what will happen. I knew that neither of them wanted to play with that kind of risk, so they didn't put up a fight when Jason and I walked out. I took Jason to go get dinner and ice cream and I tried my best to comfort him. I provided him with a safe space to share his feelings and to just exist without the fear of one tiny action causing havoc. In the weeks that followed, I was granted legal guardianship of Jason. Riley and Jack cited that they planned to move to a different state and didn't want to disrupt Jason's education as a reason for transferring for guardianship. The two of them did end up moving, which proved to be a big sigh of relief for me. Jason is doing much better now and he seems a lot happier. Knowing that he won't ever run into his parents for a long while has brought about a better side to him. He's one of the kindest and sweetest kids I know. He thanks me every day for what I did for him and I intend to keep my promise to always protect him for the rest of my life. Thank you for listening.